YouTube, it's Louise the Big Head Bookworm. Lovely to see you. Hope you're well. Hope you're having a lovely day. Uh, it's Wednesday the 21st of December and I am here with my midweek reads or as Laura says, hashtag am reading. So in my last video where I said this is going to be my, first, my I'm trying this out as my new way, my new way forward, um, she commented, Laura commented and said all the cool kids are doing hashtag um, I'm reading. So for about a millisecond I can actually be cool. So I am going to call this hashtag I'm reading and I do realise by going hashtag I have nullified any cool points I have ever had in my entire life but I don't care. I'm going to keep on doing it until somebody comes in the room and goes stop! Uh, the cat's already just gone like that so I think we'll will will stop. So there we go. This is my am reading. And so what did I read this week? Well, I had started last week um Brilliance by Marcus Seiki. Oh, that's glary, isn't it? It is quite a grey grey day here. We are forecast some rain, so it's gone really dark and so this has gone really glary, but this is a um science fiction thriller, very much set in the now and it is book one of the Brilliance trilogy. So I had started reading that and because I was somewhere where I was short of a book and I didn't have that with me and I was wondering what to read, I had picked up Soulless by Gail Carriger. So those were the two books that I was currently reading last Wednesday. Now I was surprised by the amount of people that said, can't wait to hear what you think of Soulless. So it was the most common comment last week was A, like the hair, giving me fear of the 70s all over again, which I completely realised that it was a bit scary. Excuse me, I just wanted to get comfortable then. It wasn't comfortable. Um, but the other one was Soulless. Oh, I can't wait to see. Oh, I can't wait to hear what you're going to think of Soulless. And I thought I was like slightly baffled as to why, apart from the fact it is a much beloved book on booktube and, and I was, I am probably the last woman in Christendom to actually read it. So there we are. So I picked it up. So I carried on reading it a bit more. And as I said, I found it a quite arch to begin with. And I was kind of, that's the kind of tone that it was hearing, I was hearing when I was reading it. Then I got into it more and... I completely understood. Oh, I understand. But it has caused this dilemma in me. So, it is a novel of vampires, werewolves and parasols. It is set in a steampunk Victorian England, Victorian London. And this, our wonderful Alexia, is soulless and so if somebody that's paranormal touches her they are their their powers are null and void it's also an adult romance i realize now and what everybody has to realize that lord macon the werewolf is actually mine now so previously you may have thought that he could be yours but actually he's mine now now that's it. No, it's no, no, it has been decided. I have contacted the god of booktube, the, the god of all book readers, and I have said I would like Lord Macon to be mine now. And he, he she, it has said yes. You may have Lord Macon as yours. I, I was really quite surprised that I would have such tender and racy feelings towards a werewolf. Who knew? Who knew that that could be a thing? I, I was quite heated at at times when I was reading this. I had no idea. All the nibbling. There was a lot of nibbling in this book. If I'd, I, I don't know how much nibbling there was. It seemed to me to be an awful lot of nibbling. So much so, I started kind of arching my neck towards the husband. Maybe he would like to nibble. Didn't quite have the desired effect I was hoping for. No, he said, oh, what's the matter, Pear? Is your neck sore? Do you need a heated wheat bag? I was like, no, it's not particularly what I wanted being thrust against me, but, you know, fine. After doing all of that, my neck was a bit tender, and so the heated wheat bag did do its job, and I felt fine afterwards. But, oh, such a good book. Such a good book. I got to the point where I was just like, 
everything had to stop. And I, I woke up one morning, I woke up at like kind of 6.30 in the morning. And I was like, right, I'm going to, I'm finishing this. This is just so good. I absolutely loved the tone. It did take me a little while to get used to it, but I loved the tone. And once I was there, oh, it was so, so good. My one thing, obviously, Lord Macon, Alexia, everything is wonderful. My one thing is the question of the soullessness. I felt it was... I felt it wasn't explained, or... I don't know. I, I That was the only thing I was uncomfortable about. But I just let it roll. I just kind of went with it, and it was, it was grand. So, yes, everybody, completely understand what you were saying. Completely understand why it's everybody's favourite book. But you now must realise it's one of my favourite books, and so you cannot have Lord Macon. He is, in fact, mine. Okay, now we've all agreed. So I will be getting the next one, which is... Oh, I should have looked this one up. Changeless. Changeless. We'll be coming at you quite soon. It's just fabulous. So, yes, nestle there in the houses. Um, so then I picked up and completed uh, Brilliance by Marcus Seiki. Um, so the Brilliance... The, the Brilliance people they're called brilliance and they are geniuses there's normally one in a generation but they're being born very frequently and they have the, they're set up in tier so tier one is just you know that they're just phenomenal geniuses and um they're called the abnorms and then you've got the norms and it's kind of a conflict and it's very much a sci-fi it's a thriller with a sci-fi element i thought it was a sci-fi thriller but it's very much a thriller with a sci-fi element. I did really enjoy it. I did I did really enjoy it. To begin with, I must admit, um I I think I I was regretting the fact that I hadn't realised it was a thriller with a sci-fi element. And so I was a bit disappointed. I did find it interesting. I did enjoy it. Is it the best I've ever read? No. I'm not sure I'm going to continue with the trilogy, even though the trilogy is available at the moment on e-readers for, for ridiculously low price. So part of me is like, well, why not get it? Because then at some point you might. But if I don't want to read it now, straight after finishing the book, I'm thinking that in a couple of months I'm going to be like, why have I got this? So I've, I've, I'm holding off. I'm holding off. So that's a shame, but... Anyway, so the what am I reading now? I hear you cry. Well, I am reading. I went to the library, just happened to have a little wander through, and I saw this. Oh, shiny. Uh, Cressley Cole's A Hunger Like No Other. This is book one in the Immortals After Dark series. I read the prequel novella in the summer on my Kindle, because it was free, or very cheap. Um, and I liked it, and so I th I thought at some point I would grab hold of these. But then I walked into the lie bob, and there they all were. Well, the, uh, at least the first four in the series are currently in the library, and they must have just been just be ordered in. Because look at that, that is a unread book. I was like, oh, so this is so I picked up a hunger like no other, and no rest for the wicked. So these are adult paranormal romances if it's anything like the novella it is quite adult Ooh. so yes so again it's paranormal romance and after sold us so i'm i'm in the mood for that i can take that so i'm really going to read those so i got the first two of those didn't want to grab the others uh put that there and um, the other thing i saw which i was so thrilled about which if i get on my e-reader i have got between Two Thorns, the first in the Split Worlds series, trilogy. And I was saying that the reason I got it on this is because I haven't been able to spot it anywhere else. And there, in the library, in the same display as the Cresley Coles, was book two and book three of the Split Worlds. What? What? I was like that. I was like... <gasps> And before I knew it, I picked it up and checked it out. You know, before I'd even, I'd even kind of contemplated what I, what I was doing. Um, so, oh, sorry. 
the cat's just getting in a box down here. Um, so I'm, I've started reading this. So this is actually the book that I'm currently feasting my eyes on is Between Two Thorns, Emma Newman, which is um, Fae, is dealing with the Fae in London and Bath, and there are two worlds. And the, it's kind of getting, the, the portals are changing, I think. I think, I'm about, I'm about 10%, 20% in. Oh, that's quite hard. I would say it's just a it's a fay book at the moment. It is it is doing set in modern day, um, and I am enjoying it. I'm having to let it kind of wash over me a little bit because the world building is I'm taking it's taking a bit of time for me to understand exactly what's happening. So when that happens, I just kind of let it wash over me. I don't tend to try and analyze it or fight it. I just kind of assume that at some point it will make sense. And it is beginning. I'm getting to that point where I go, oh, all right, okay, no, 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 I've got it all, I've got it all worked out. Um, so I am enjoying it. It is just taking me a little bit of time to get into it, but I am enjoying it. So that's book one. So I'm reading that at the moment on my e-reader, and physical book that I'm reading is A Hunger Like No Other. What will happen is I will pick this up and I will get into this and then I'll come back to, to Emma Newman. So I will over the next week, which of course is Christmas. Um, I will be reading those two series. So I shall be reading the Crazy Coles and then I will be reading the Split World series. All my books. So those are the five books. Not that I will read those in a week because it's Christmas and we're doing stuff. The other thing that I picked up from the library, which I just thought I'd show you, just keeping an eye on the time, is volume two of Saga. I read volume one as like everybody else does. I thought it was fabulous. Um, so, but I'm not gonna buy them. So it's a question of when can I find them in the library? And the libraries aren't great for na graphic novels. So I was stunned when I actually saw volume two in the library and I did exactly the same as with the other books. I just kind of picked it up and, and at some point I will sit and have a little read of this and get drawn back into the world of saga. I think I can remember what was going on, so it'll all be good. So there we go. There we go. I have a couple of new books already, um, but I'm not gonna show you those in this video. I might see if I have enough time later on in the week to do that. I also am planning on looking back at the books that I read this in 2016. And I'm also thinking about a reading challenge for myself in 2017. So I'm actually looking on Pinterest and on the internet and uh, like Book Riot, etc., to see what kind of reading challenges are out there. And I might well do one of those rather than devise my own. But I think I might do one of those because I think that will probably stretch me more than my if I did myself. But I'm somebody that just reads on a whim. You know, that's what I'm most comfortable doing so it would really stretch me to even do a reading challenge so maybe 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 not are you doing a reading challenge and what are you reading at the moment and are you upset that that lord macon is now mine those are the th three questions i have for you it's been lovely to see you bookchip i hope you're having a lovely week and i'm thinking of you all the time bye